and it's been burning in him and he's been bringing forth the revelation of this word I believe to his church and setting order and direction in the hearts and the minds of the people and they've been having a visitation of the Holy Spirit they've, they've been having powerful services where God shows up because they put him first it's not about them it's about him yeah everybody get that yeah. yeah. Not about us. It's all about Him. Yeah. And when they put Him in His rightful place, the glory shows up. Amen. 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 So, Amen. if you guys want to give me and bring them forth. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And Tafiki and Scott, and right. you guys want to come here and do worship? Or? Apostle Allen, yeah. do you want to go yeah. first? Let me, let me go you first. Share, okay. Let me show, can I show first? Grace and peace be unto you this morning. Amen. Apostle Allen, and I thank God for the opportunity to be with you today and to share the burden of the Lord that's on my heart with you. Um, we have, uh, first of the year, have had some strange things happen in our ministry. Um, but God has really, really turned up the volume of his brother. Can you hold that for me? Yeah. Before I get her here now, I want to just share with you first before we go into worship. I think that this word that God given me will help us to facilitate throne room worship and give before our king. Um, there's a passage of scripture that says that in in Chronicles 12 and 32, it says that the children of Issachar understood, means that understood timing and what Israel ought to do. Yeah. And so what I believe I operate in that, our ministry have always been on the cutting edge of ministry in our region, always been the one that break forth into the things that God is, is doing in the earth first. So Father, I just thank you for this opportunity, this time to be with your people and to share your word. Lord, we just open for your spirit to move according as you would have it to move. Yes. Thank you for the depths of, of your love flowing through our hearts. As we all love you and believe that you are our King and our Lord and that you're coming soon. Yes. Yes. Help us be prepared and ready yes, Lord. for the great and noble day of your return. Yes. Our yes. blessed hope, our King, our Lord, our God, the one that is the one that was and one that is to come. Yes. The Almighty. We thank you yes. for your presence today. You. In Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Uh, I don't want to be here long for you because I want to just kind of set this and hoping that this will facilitate you to move into another dimension of worship in a way that you probably haven't been used to doing. But I believe it's the, it's the proper way that God won't us to enter into him. A uh, true worshiper, you know that this begin about worship in heaven. Satan wanted worship. So he decided that he was going to sit above the stars of heaven and he's going to sit on the throne of God and be worshiped. So it started in heaven. This, this idea of worship started there. Satan himself in Matthew 4, 20, 4 and 9 said to Jesus, all this that you see, I'll give it to you. If you just bow down and what? Worship me. But it's going to end in worship. It began about worship and it's going to end in worship. Because in Philippians 2 and 10, it says that at the name of Jesus, Every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Yeah. So it's going to end about worship. Yeah. If worship is the key yes, it is. that open up all these things that we are experiencing in, 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 in earth today, then we ought to know how we, we ought to know how to do it. Yeah. And we ought to know how to do it properly, right? Yeah. So God showed me, said, and, and, and he told Moses, he said, Moses, in Exodus 25 and 8 and 9, he says, now I want you to build me a tabernacle according to the pattern that I showed you in the mountain. 
In, in other words, God says, Moses, show them how to get to me. Because yeah. I want to be in the mix of my people. Yeah. This whole thing is that God wants to be in the mix of us. Yeah. In a very tangible way. So, and even in Hebrews 8 and 5, he, he tells them, he's, he told Moses the same thing as I'm, that God told him to build this tabernacle and do it according to the pattern. According to the pattern. What is the pattern? You see the pattern. You saw the, you see the, the outer court. What we call Passover. We experience that. We experience that when we embrace Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. First dimension of getting close to him. Of coming near to him. Second dimension, Pentecost. Being endowed with the spirit of, of, of God's grace. His ability. His power rests upon us and in us. Yes. Second dimension. Those things, those two events happen that you can experience the third event. Yeah. Which is tabernacle. Mm -hmm. The tangible presence of God with yeah. his people. Yes. A lot of people call it the glory. Mm -hmm. It's the very nature, the very character of God. So we need to know that if we stay at Passover, right. we'll never experience Pentecost. Right. And if we stay at Pentecost and say, this is it, there's nothing else, we'll never experience tabernacle. Right. We'll never experience the fullness of his glory. These two events was for you to have the third event right. of the third dimension. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus told us in, in John 4 23 you remember he met the woman at the well and he, he told us his, that the hour is coming and now he is that the true worshipers is going to worship him in spirit and in truth in spirit the very core of who we are in spirit the very core of who we are but also in truth, according to the pattern, according to the design that God has laid out in his word, that's how we learn how to worship. Yeah. Now, either we can keep following the pattern that we see that's been laid out before us, or we can look at it and get the true picture of what true worship really looked like. And he gave it to us. He told us what, we, what to pray for. He told us that the disciples said, how, how are we out to pray? And he, he told us that said, our Father put y'all in heaven, hallowed thy name. Okay? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in work. So we want to do what heaven is doing. Yeah. So we want to want the true picture of worship, we got to look what how heaven is worshiping God. Yeah. And the Bible shows us exactly how heaven worship God. Yeah. So one of the key things is, is to hollow his name. That, that word hollow means to, to render sacred, to treat as holy, yeah. to consecrate, to set it apart, yeah. to make holy. The name of God is hollow in reverence. It as holy. Holy, when we when we when we when we talk about God holiness, we can't really compare it to anything on the earth because everything on the earth being contaminated. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the other. Yeah. It's the other mm -hmm. pureness. So in Revelation. It tells us in Revelation 4, 1 and 11, it tells us that the throne room worship, that we find another key to, to enter into this third dimension. It says that the, 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 the 24 elders took their crowns and threw it at his feet. Yeah. They took what was given to them by the king of kings, by their works, for the king, 
And when true worship took place and the manifestation of God standing before the throne, the 24 elders realized that we don't even deserve this. Until we be able to empty ourselves of our own self-worth and understand that the, that he's enthroned and we are being dethroned, that the life of God will live through us, we cannot enter into this third dimension. So the 24 elders realized that. So they took off their crown. They took off their titles. They took off the name of their ministries. They took everything off and threw it at his feet. And declare that he and he alone is worthy to receive what? All glory, all honor, and all praise. One of the worst things that we can ever do is to empty ourselves. We got to empty ourselves of ourselves in order for him to be enthroned. For him to be enthroned. True worship is costly. True worship is costly. What is it going to cost you? It's going to cost you you. It's going to cost you denying you. And to embrace him. Casting down all self-worth. And becoming empty. That he can be enthroned in our lives. Psalms 5 and 7 says, the psalmist said this, he says, But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitudes of thy mercies. In other words, I'm not coming in your house, God, on my own self-worth, or on my own merits. I'm not entering into your temple in my own merits, but I'm coming in on the multitudes of your mercy. Because tell the truth about it, every one of us right now standing in a place of mercy. Yeah. None of us deserve what we deserve. None of us deserve what we got. It's just the mercies of God that we are who we are. So true worship is birthed out of that place of knowing that him and him alone deserve all of the glory, all of the honor, and all of the praise. And we must empty ourselves of ourselves in order for God to be enthroned in our life. It's no longer I who live, Paul said to the, to the Galatians, but Christ who lived in me. And the life now I live, I live through the power of God. Yes. This worship, um, in Revelation 5 and 8 it says, and when he had taken the book, the Christ took the book, the beast, 24 elbows, they fell down. They fell down before the Lamb. Yeah. Having everyone hearts and golden fowls full of odor, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song. They sung a new song on the position of their faces. Wow. True reverence to God. Listen, spiritual, in my spirit. I must worship him out of spirit. Yeah. I truly love God. I truly honor and reverence God. But true reverence will bring you to your knees. Yeah. 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 Greater reverence will put you on your face. Yeah. 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 To honor and to glorify him. So it's position and it's condition of the heart. If the heart is truly reverence God, it'll put your body in the right position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me... Let me from the position on their face, they had a new song. Yeah. And they said, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou hast slain and hast redeemed us to God by, the, by thy blood and out of every kindred, tongues of people and nation, and has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Every man of God that ever had a tangible manifestation of God's presence, the first thing that they did, they fell on their faces. In Genesis 1, in Genesis 17 and 3, it says, Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, out of a position of reverence and godly fear, 
God began to talk to Abraham and giving him his, his destiny and his purpose. Right. We try to get it out of a place of our self-worth or our own works. Mm. But you get the anointing, you get the grace of God, you get the revelation of God, you get the direction of God by true referencing him. It says in Leviticus 9.27 And there came a fire out from before the Lord and can consume upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat which when all the people saw they shouted and fell on their face. Numbers 20 and 6 Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and they fell upon their face and the glory of the Lord appeared. True rebels bring God's presence. Amen. Numbers 22 and 31. He said, then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and, and, and his sword was drawn in his hand and he, and he bowed down his head and fell flat on his face. Because he had a visitation of the presence and the glory of God. Joshua 5 and 14. He said, he says, nay, but as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, what says my Lord unto his servant? Yeah. A position of reverence, a position of godly fear. Job 1.20. He said, then Job rose up out of the position of myrrh, out of the position of bitterness and out of, a, out of the position of losing everything that he had. He said, Joe rose up and rent his mantle, shaved his head, and he fell down upon the ground in worship. Mm -hmm. 